What's going on, everyone? Out to the Redling Winter here. I just got back from a pre tiring day at work and uh, got home, and a special little package came in. Now, I want to preference this to a little something you should know about. Now, in case you haven't figured it out, checking out my channel by now, which you should have known this by now, I'm a big fan of Yu Gi Oh! The card game Yu Gi Oh! Most of the most of the series, the animes, the various different animes that they've done with it. I'm a big fan of it all. So, I was just kind of uh, one day like a while back. I sat down and I was just kind of looking up Yu Gi Oh cards like I usually do, and I was just kind of looking around on YouTube about all these Yu Gi Oh YouTubers, and then I found this one video. Made by a channel called Orica Cards. Or Gia or Gaia Orica. I'm probably botching the name, which I usually do botch most names, but <laughs> but in this case I will say that I came across this channel that was talking about prop that talked about proxy cards. I'm like, ooh, proxy cards. What are those? Proxy cards are essentially fake cards. And I'm like, interesting. Why would you want to fake cards? Like, sell them on the market? It's like, no, these are... Proxy cards are usually, like, custom-made cards by people who are, like, big fans of Yu-Gi-Oh! That want to make either more accurate versions of certain cards and decks. Like, anime decks. Like, for example, like, the Doll Duelist from Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. Um, Darts' deck, several other characters that have decks that are, that, whose cards are just in the anime, and have not been made into the TCG, or the OCG, depending on your, how you view your side of the card game, and I thought this was pretty interesting, you know, someone, a fan making these cards, I thought, well, they're probably not that good of quality, and they're just custom-made stuff. I'm not sure how well it looks. And then I check out their channel and start watching their videos. I'm like, ooh, this kind of looks legit. Like, these look just like Yu-Gi-Oh cards. And these cards are kind of based off of an anime character's deck. That's not actually made in the game, which also I find to be... A lot of the characters inside Yu-Gi-Oh, I feel like the way should they go ahead and like make the cards kind of like a Professor Banner with his alchemy deck, Night Sh Night Shroud or Night or Darkness, depending on your you know how you want to call him, the main bad guy instead of see, uh, season four of Yu-Gi-Oh GX, his Darkness deck. Darks has an odd deck. And being all over your calculus. They even made they made all all those debts I just described. This guy made them. And I'm like, okay, I'm really curious about this. I want to tr like order this, see it for myself. So I found his uh, store over on Etsy. Gaia or cards. Again, probably botching the name. I checked it out, and he's got some good selections. He does more than just proxy cards. He also does like. Custom cards, like, based on the American anime kind of card artwork, where it's like the picture and then the attack and defense points down here. The way it is, and you know, if, when you're in America and you watch a series and they just kind of basically edit the uh, animation so that way the card is, doesn't have any Japanese on it. Just a picture and attack and, attack and defense points and level, you know. And I see all this stuff, I'm like, okay, this guy... Has also got pretty good reviews. This guy could be legit. But there's only one way for me to find out. So I ordered this. This is the stretcher deck. World of Darkness. That I ordered from this guy. Or guys. And I ordered this a while back. Um, because. Fun fact. These guys are over in Mexico. That made this. They have a little card store. And they have it, it's down in Mexico. I forget where it is, but, you know, shipping it from there to where I'm at over in Alabama, that's a pretty big uh, thing on, you know, shipping. So, 
But now I've got it. I've got it right here. And first impressions when I took it right out of the box, I thought, okay, a little smaller than I thought. But I'm actually really excited. Like as soon as I saw this come in and I opened it up, I saw this, I was hyped up. I was tired <laughs> like earlier. I was like super tired. I I made me some food. And then went over onto the kitchen table where this I found these, opened it up, I got hyped up. So I thought I got to go ahead and start working on the video <laughs> of me opening this up and checking it out. And uh, after afterwards, this will either be part of the video or a separate video, but we're going to be trying this deck out in an actual duel to see how it feels. So, but first, this is really cool. <laughs> I'm really excited. Now, I'm going to take a little moment, and we're going to head over to my little spot over in the other side of the room. We're going to bust this open, see how, how the cards look. See you guys in just a second. Also, just a little thing real quick. Bounce scent stickers. This is kind of like, uh, this is this has nothing to do with it, but I just think that these stickers are really cool. It's that one. One turn kill. Skull Servant. And a pot grade. I'll show that. Okay, enough of the nonsense. To the other side of the room. <laughs> Uh, I had to take a moment to kind of like open these up and check them and because these the plastic that was made to get these things like keep them sealed this is some tough plastic like you know it was a uh, had to pull pull out a sharper knife and be careful with it but now we can actually look at these things now I'm going to go ahead and examine the now this is the ace monster of the dip but I want to Kind of examine this card real close, and this is this is right here. This is a natural Yu-Gi-Oh card. This is Purge of Ray. <clears throat> Actually, let me compare it with one of the traps in here. That'd be a little more accurate. All right. So let's take a good look. Now you can kind of tell. I mean, you may not be able to tell over inside the video, but this is a little paler in terms of the color of it. Yeah, definitely a little paler. Looks like it was kind of like printed off of a computer. Not quite the same kind of printing as this. Um, the actual card itself, these are just a tad bit flimsier. Yeah. Uh, back end, same thing as the front end. It just doesn't quite have that glossy finish to it. Yeah, but honestly, it is not too bad. It's honestly a little bit better of, in terms of condition than I thought it would be. I, I was predicting that these were just like pieces of paper that were kind of um, glued together, <laughs> possibly. That was like my big concern was like the quality of the card itself, but these feel like pretty good quality. So. I'm not worried about a quality issue there. Once I throw these things into some good sleeves, like may like you probably won't be able to notice like how these aren't full, how they don't look like actual Yu-Gi-Oh cards, because you know a good enough, you know. I I'm just rambling. Let's just get to it. Let's look at this son of a bitch of a deck. All right, because this is Darkness's deck. So let's see how good it is. All right, now first Darkness Slime. Let's see here. Darkness Slime. I love, actually, that's a pretty good artwork. Because if I remember inside of the anime, Darkness Slime didn't actually have artwork. It was just kind of a blob, and you didn't actually see the card. Let's see. Level 1, Dark Attribute, Aqua. If you control the monster, special summon this card from your hand. When this card special summon, target one monster you're on your opponent's field. This card's attack becomes equal to... Wait. This card's attack becomes equal to that monster's defense, and its defense becomes equal to the attack. Okay, so it flips it around. If this card leaves the field, add one darkness card from your deck to your hand. 
That's a darkness card, so it could be a darkness spill or trap or a monster. It's pretty cool. Alright, then we got Necro Slime. Also, I think that's also another custom kind of card look right there. But in terms of the artwork, that's not too bad. Let's see. Darkness Necro Slime, level 2 Dark Attribute Aqua. Tribute this card from your hand or face up on the field to target one darkness monster in your graveyard. It's set darkness necro slime and special summon it. Three copies of that too, damn. Ooh, darkness neo spear. Now this card is in the actual game. Okay, it's got two copies. This card's in the actual game. If I believe if I remember correctly its original effect is that it has to be special summoned by discarding a fiend and sending a fiend from your field to the graveyard while that fiend is in battle. And then special summons this from the hand. And then during each end phase allows you to reset all of your face of traps. Now, this one does darkness negro spear. Um, no, neo sphere, my bad. Uh, very similar in terms of attack attributes, fiend. It's very similar, but See, cannot be normal summoned or set. Must be special summoned by tributing two dark monsters from your hand and or field when your opponent declares an attack. Uh. Oh, okay. Okay, so it, it specifies just darkness cards rather than fa focusing it, it being on fiends. Okay. Which, I mean, all these fiends are, I mean, they're, I mean, are these darkness cards are either fiends, plants, or aqua, so... That makes the deck a little more, that makes it a little easier to summon this. Very similar summoning requirement. Um, this card cannot be destroyed by battle. Quick effect. You can look at your set spells and traps on the field. Once per turn, during, return all face up traps on the field to the owner's hands. During the end phase, if your life points are lower than 5,000, your life points become 5,000. You can only use each effect of this monster once per turn. You got two copies right there. Okay. Okay, next one is Darkness Outsider. Now this one, uh, I think they did show artwork for him. Let's see, two copies. Let's see, Outsider, level four, Darkness, Outsider. Uh, zero attack, zero defense, which is oddly enough the theme in this deck. I, most of these guys don't have attack or defense. It's all zero. Once per turn, discard the one card from your hand. Reveal the top ten cards of your opponent's deck. Choose one monster among those cards and special summon it to your side of the field. And if you do, place this card at the bottom of your opponent's deck. Okay, that's interesting. Because I think the original fit back in the anime was that you could search your opponent's deck for any for any monster, special summon it to your side of the field, and then just shuffle this into the deck. So, Okay, that's actually a fairer version. Rather than just going through the whole deck, just top 10 cards. That's that's pretty cool. Okay. Next we got two copies of Darkness Rain Crow. Now, I don't remember this card as much, but let's take a look. Let's see. It is level 8. Fiend type gains 400 attack and defense for every Darkness card you control. You take no battle damage from attacks involving this attack position monster. When a opponent's monster declares an attack, you can send this card from your hand to the grave. And one face-up darkness card you control and special summon one darkness monster from your deck. Okay. You got two copies right there. Let's see here. Then we got Darkness Seed. Two copies right here. See, Darkness Seed is a, is a level 2 dark attribute plant monster. A thousand attack and a thousand defense. See here. Let me show them a little more to you. Okay, I'll just read off the second one. See, if this card is sent to the graveyard by an effect special summon it from the grave during your second standby phase, after this card's effect resolves, if special summon this way, gain the following effect: it cannot be destroyed by battle. And during the end phase, if your life points are lower than four thousand, they become four thousand. Okay. Okay, then I got three copies of Darkness Eye. Let's see here. Darkness Eye is a... What's it? My bad. Darkness Eye is a level 1 dark attribute fiend with zero attack and a thousand defense. Once per turn, quick effect. You can look at the t 
all of your set spells and traps on the field. Once per turn, if this card faces up in a tap position, you can normal summon one monster without tributing. And if you do, add one darkness card from your deck to your hand. So actually, that's really cool. Being a not only being able to look at your set cards, which by the way, uh, fun fact about this deck is uh, the key card in this deck, which is the field spell darkness, prevents either player from looking at their set cards. So, you know, with that becoming a new thing with this deck, like cards with this kind of effect is very important. Also, it allows you to normal summon without tri without tributing. So, high level monster. And then search your deck for another darkness card. That's insane. So I could play a, lot, a high level darkness monster. And then just kind of. Just search my deck for whatever. That's, that's kind of crazy. Already I don't know if this is a fair deck or not. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. We'll keep going. Uh, three copies of darkness hound. Now I don't think that this was an actual card in the anime. So this is. Completely custom. Here, take a look. See, Darkness Hound is a level 3 dark attribute monster with that is also a fiend type. 1200 attack, 800 defense. When this card is summoned, add one Darkness Spell or Trap from your deck to your or graveyard to your hand. This card can also attack directly. This deck is really good. Almost everything in here has a search mechanic. That is, um,. You can literally get anything in this deck just by using one card or the other. Two copies of Darkness Destroyer. This card uh, actually is actually inside the TCG and the OCG, much like Nero Sphere. Uh, very similar, you know, Dark Attribute Fiend, 2300 tap points, level 7. Um, inside the actual game, I believe you can't special summon it, uh, but this card can attack twice per turn and can deal if uh, a piercing damage so the difference is with this one it cannot be special summoned except by the effect of a darkness cards effect any monster destroyed by battle with a darkness monster is banished instead of being sent to the graveyard this card can make a second attack during each battle phase if this card attacks a monster in defense mode it inflicts piercing battle damage so it enables it the ability to be special summoned, specifically with this darkness card, and will allow you to banish your opponent's cards instead of sending them to the graveyard. That, that's pretty cool. <laughs> All right, uh, last monster, uh, last of the main deck monsters, Darkness Bramble. So Darkness Bramble is a level six plant monster with two thousand attack and two thousand defense. If a darkness card would leave the field, you can discard this card instead. So whether so that means that if it would leave the field, that doesn't just include like being destroyed. Like if it was destroyed on the field, like let's say this guy, my darkness card, is on the field and it would be banished. I can just discard that instead of being banished. It stays on the field. That's pretty cool. Also. Once per turn, quick effect, look at your cards set face down in the spell and trap cards. So, during the end phase, if your life points are less than 4,000, they become 4,000. Honestly, I don't think... I don't know if you'll be able to get killed with this deck or not. Alright, next. Um, we'll come to the traps in a second. Now this right here, this is kind of the important bit right here. The spells and the traps. Because this is basically what Darkness's whole strategy is about. The spell card Darkness Core. Let's see here. We got... I think three copies. Yep, yeah, three copies. Darkness Core. is a normal spell card. It's a fet. Add one Darkness card from your deck to your hand. You can banish this card from your graveyard and shuffle up to three Darkness cards in your graveyard into the deck. And then if you do, you draw one. You can only use each effect of Darkness Core and once per turn. So, dang. 
All right, now this is the main card in the deck. The actual like main card you will be wanting to use all the time. The Field Spell Darkness. Darkness is a fit. When this card is activated, destroy all other spells and traps on the field. Then, set one of each zero, infinity, darkness one, two, and three at random from your hand or deck. And I'll hold up right there. First of all, this card is basically a heavy storm upon activation. And then you search your deck for the five spell continuous spells and traps that you need to do your strategy. Now, that is pretty dope. Being able to wipe the field of all spells and traps and then just pop the five sin the five important traps in your deck. I mean, that's literally amazing. Yeah, pretty much why this card will never be inside the actual TCG. <laughs> uh, but continue with that, it's got more. While this card is on the field, neither player can look at their set spells or traps. Except by the effect of a darkness card. Also, they cannot be destroyed by your opponent's card effects. Now that is pretty interesting. So I can't so I can't destroy my opponent's spells and traps, and also my opponent can destroy my spells and traps. So this wipes so this wipes out the field of the back row. This protects the back row afterwards, lets you set spells and traps, and your opponent can't look at his own shit. That is crazy. And it keeps going. During the standby phase, quick effect, you can look at one set spell or trap on the field. So even if you don't have your eyes and Bramble and the other cards in this day that help you look at your set cards, this card lets you look at lets you lets you look at one once per turn. So that at least gives you something. During the end phase, set all face up trap cards you control and if you do randomly rearrange them. So dang. Dang. This <laughs> if this card is in the actual TCG, I don't know if they will make it so busted. Which is why they never will. <clears throat> now then. We got three copy no, two copies of infinity. Okay. Two copies of infinity. So this card is always treated as a darkness card. And also, its other effects are, if you control face-up darkness, apply the appropriate effects. If you control zero, activate all of your set spells and traps between the zones of this card and zero. If, if you do not control zero, s activate one set card, one set spell or trap. Okay, and I'll explain this in a, just a second. Zero... This card is always treated as a darkness card. If you control a face-up darkness, a place, apply the... Oh my god. I'm allergic to the broken shit. Oh no. Alright. Okay, if you control a face-up darkness, apply the appropriate effects. If you control infinity... Activate all set spells and traps between this card and infinity. If you do not control infinity, just set one. Just activate one of the uh, face down spells and traps. So, inside of the anime, you know, I'll come back to that in just a second. You'll have to see the, what these cards do real quick to understand why. Darkness one. You get, let me check, let's like two copies of that as well. Darkness 1. If this card is activated by the effect of infinity or zero, banish one card your opponent controls, then destroy one card your opponent controls for each darkness 2 or 3 that you control upon this card's activation. Two copies of that. Darkness 2, also two copies. If this card is activated by the effect of zero or infinity, apply the following effects. Target one face-up monster your opponent controls. Oh, it's my bad. Target one face-up monster you control, and it gains a thousand attack points. 
and then it gains another thousand for every other copy of Darkness One and Three that you control. Two copies of that, and this next card, Darkness Three. If this card is activated by Infinity or Zero card effect, inflict a thousand points of damage to your opponent, and then an additional one thousand for each Darkness One and Two that you control upon this card's activation. Two copies of that. So. The strategy with this whole deck is to get this field out. So the point is that you would activate zero or infinity, and based on whatever card is in between zero and infinity, it would activate. So if so, there was a moment inside of the show where it would be one darkness card or two darkness cards, but and then three darkness cards. So you can apply these three cards all all in unison. And the thing is that these cards can only work if you use these cards. It's crazy. This is crazy. I'm, I don't even know how well this deck is going to work. I have high hopes. I have seriously high hopes. Alright, I'll be to her in a second. This one is called Darkness Slayer. It's a Link monster. I was surprised when he well, that there was that they put a Link monster in here. I was very surprised. Darkness Slayer is a dark attribute Link one fiend monster. It has nineteen hundred attack points. To Link summon it, you need one dark fiend monster. When this card is Link summoned, activate one field spell from your deck directly to the field. Whoa! So that's not even a s Ash Blossom can't touch this card theoretically. All you gotta do is just link some of this and you get darkness on the field and pop. Each time a card is set on your opponent's field, you gain 300 life points. Each time a set a card is set on your field, inflict 300 points of damage to your opponent. Wow. So, that would also apply with darkness as a fat, so I could just inflict more damage. I, my, this is a burn deck, possibly. Not only could this deck rot the field inside of battle, but this deck can burn my opponent's smithereens. Holy smithers. Speaking of smithers, this is the strongest card in the deck. Darkness Empress. Darkness Empress is a level 10 dark fiend monster with an undetermined amount of attack points and undetermined amount of defense points. This card must be... This card requires two Darkness Monsters and a level 6 or higher Fiend Monster. Must first be special summoned from your extra deck by banishing the above cards you control. You do not use Polymerization. Darkness cards you control cannot be destroyed but by card fits. This card gains a thousand attack and defense for each face of Darkness spell or trap you control. Once per turn, you can return all spells and traps on the field to your hand and inflict 500 points of damage to your opponent for each card returned. You cannot set cards for the rest of the turn. Wow. I tell you what, this deck is something. This deck is something. And I am looking forward to giving this deck a shot. And this, I, this is actually a full deck, once at one. We got two, four, six, eight, ten. Sixteen. Two. Seven.
16. Oh my god. This is a full 40 card deck. This whole deck, as it is, is 40 cards. Plus 5 cards in the answer deck. Holy crap, I'm going to squash my opponents with this deck. <laughs> if I use it. A thing that you need to know about Proxy Deaths is that they are not tournament legal because they are not official cards. So, but I'm going to be playing with this deck in my spare time. And you will see a video in the near future of me trying this deck out against an opponent. It should be pretty soon. But I just want you guys to know I am super hyped for trying this deck out. And I, and honestly, this deck feels pretty good. Now, I will go ahead and tell you the bid price tag real quick, just to kind of let you guys know. This deck is about $100. This, it was about $75, and then extra for $15 with taxes and shipping. So you're looking at about $90 to $100 right there. So, I want you guys to think about that before you start thinking, looking at for proxy decks. Now, also, before we start thinking about Proxy this is going to be inside of a serious duel between me and another opponent, so that we know for certain whether or not this deck, as cool as it sounds, as cool as it looks, really works in a duel. And we're about to find out sometime next time. Thank you guys for dropping by and checking out my review of the Proxy deck. As I said before, this deck doesn't look... The cards in here don't look specifically similar to most traditional Yu-Gi-Oh cards. The finish isn't right. It's a little paler. A little more flimsy. I mean, but it's not that bad, honestly. When you throw these things into a sleeve, I'm sure they will feel great. They'll feel fine. God. And I, honestly, I cannot believe I've actually got, I've got this, and I am so pumped to do Alright, guys. Enough of my blabbering. I'm going to head out. Tally-ho.